Every heartbeat, every drop of blood carries the torch of memory, illuminating the hunter's path. The red dirt and red stags of Nyora, Australia continue to call me back. There you go. With my friends Casey and Brad from Have Go Safaris at my side, I intend to answer that call. I am hungry for the red stag's crown, but falling the king won't be easy. Only blood and memory will tell. I hunt animals in the pursuit of life. Life lived and life taken. I believe it's through this dance with nature and the wild places that we truly live, connect and grow. I'm Chris Waters, the Australian Huntsman, and these are my stories. Memory is a curious thing. It ebbs and flows, shaping our lives in unpredictable ways. As hunters, we create memories with every game trail we walk, every scent we catch, every shot we take, and every shot we miss. Today is a day I'm hoping will become one of those fond memories. Recently, Brad has been picking up a beautiful red stag on one of his game cameras, who has been moving through the area regularly. The last time Brad saw him on camera was a couple of weeks ago, so we're hoping he's still around. We've got access to about 12,000 acres of trap rock country filled with eucalyptus, acacia, oak, tea trees and cypress pines so there's plenty of places he could be hiding. The goal today is to canvas some of the feeder gullies with the hope of finding him or at least finding some clues to where he might be. Been dead a while. Yeah. Pretty hard to tell what did it. Definitely been fed on there. Had its throat torn out. Yeah, but pigs or anything would have been having a go at it. It was pretty clear that there were animals around, even deer, but there was no sign of our stag. It's almost like there's this secret law written to the universe that whenever you're hunting deer, all you seem to find are pigs. When you're searching for pigs, you only find goats. Or there are those times when you're on a mission to fill the freezer with a nice yearling or a meat doe, and yet that's the time when you'll spot that once in a lifetime stag. Now, the upside is that when you're focused on getting a specific animal, you can then just enjoy watching and experiencing everything else that crosses your path without the pressure of needing to pull the trigger. In fact, some of my favorite hunting experiences have had nothing to do with hunting at all. I'm trying to get Casey to smell him, but he, I think he's on Panadol and I reckon the second that we went over that rise, I did a little faint bit. And then I, I was like, mm, I think I smell okay. How would you describe it? If you opened up a, a wardrobe of old clothes... You're talking about like mothballs? Kind of, yeah. Because <laughs> that's what it is. And the wind's perfect for us. Yeah. So where we've been seeing this fella stuff over here. Okay. We've still got a little way to go. Like, if you opened an old lady's wardrobe, and you got a... And it, like, she had dresses in there from like the 30s, and you went, that's what they smell like. Okay. Like that dusty, musty kind of moth, mothballs. As the evening sun started to set below the horizon, we got lucky and made a discovery that gave me hope. Right on the fringe of the last feeder gully, we discovered a rub tree. 
Given the red hinds we'd already seen in the area and how fresh these scrapings were, it was fairly likely that this rub was made by our stag. Given this particular rub was also snapped in half, this tells us that this particular stag is at least a double five, given that he would need to have used this configuration of tines to snap the sapling. Another good indicator that this was made by our guy and that he's close by. With the sun almost set, it was too late to go after him now. So we marked down the Rob's location, hiked back to the buggy and made our way back to the homestead with the aim to pick up the stag's trail first thing tomorrow morning. Now, quick aside, if you think maybe you'd like to come to Nyora to hunt with Havago Australia, maybe you should consider joining as a member of the Australian Hunters Club. In fact, let's skip the maybe. I want to personally invite you to join, like me, as a member of the club. By being a member, you can get discounts on Australian guided hunts, including hunts with Havago. You can even win this hunt. We give away professionally guided hunts as well as products every single month. Members host hunts, run events, we have an epic annual camp every year. You can even connect with other members in your region via our online members directory. To learn more or sign up, head over to australianhunters.com.au and hopefully I see you at an event soon. The dawn of the next day was filled with anticipation. We knew where this stag was, now it's just a matter of closing the gap. Now, unfortunately, the previous night in a moment of vulnerability, I confided in Brad that I wasn't used to using a leather sling on my rifle. So being the good host that he is, he felt the need to offer me a comfortable alternative. Come here. <laughs> I politely declined. Now, here's a situation that you don't want to find yourself in. You quietly walk into your hunting area only to be confronted with a herd of water buffalo. The buffalo in and of themselves aren't a major threat. If you don't threaten them, they won't threaten you for the most part. The issue is that this particular herd was at the top of the feeder gully where we'd found the rub last night. And the only place for them to go to escape was right back through it. The second that the herd spooked and charged into the basin of the gully, both Brad and I knew that we just broadcast our location to every deer in a one kilometer radius. In the unlikely event that our stag was still in that basin, he would be on high alert and would know exactly where we were. While deer might not have the greatest long-term memory, they more than make up for it with a heightened flight instinct. The instant they sense trouble, they are gone. Now, sure enough, the deer was spooked, the herd was on the move, and every other deer that hadn't bolted had their eyes firmly fixed on where we hoped to make our approach. Our only saving grace was that we did manage to catch the briefest glimpse of our red stag as he moved further up the gully. We quickly changed plans with Brad opting to stay behind and make sure the stag didn't double back, while Casey and I would cross the head of the gully and attempt an approach from the other side where we wouldn't be expected. So I reckon if we go up it over this rise, that next section down there looks really good. There's a bit of water in there. I have a feeling if we slow down at this point and just do a crawl, slowly make our way through this kind of light scrub, come up through here, up over here and wait. The wind's pretty good at the moment. It's like kind of in our right face. Us, yeah. yeah, so if we just like slow down from this point, really slow down and just curl up over that rise, have a bit of a glass and spend a few minutes doing that, and then hopefully something will pop out. And if it does, we'll be in a position to shoot. So All right. no, that sounds good. half the speed you'll want to go and then end. Halve again. Let's go. He's covered by that tree. Have you got a 
Like how far is he? Keep your range on him. He's 160. Yeah. Do you feel comfortable taking it from here? I, I do. We have the shooting sticks, but look, the wind's in our favour right now. And he's just standing there. I reckon what we could just sit tight. I guess I'm just worried. There's all those other does, and we don't know how many more are around here. Mm. All those eyeballs looking at us. If we try and get closer, we risk getting spotted. It's spooky. Find this food, come all. Yeah, and he's he's not moving. I, I can't shoot him from here. But could I either wait it out or this tree's up just in front of us? Yeah. Push forward through there, I'll follow behind you, get to that one there. See if you can pick him off from either a better angle, just a closer closer shot. Yeah, that's good, that's 20 metres, that's not too far. That's 140. Yeah, 140. Yeah, look, I think we should do that. Yeah. Let's just move really slow. That was good shooting, mate. That was, that was a good stalk. That like was that. a great stalk. Yeah. I didn't think that I hit him. Yeah, no, he, no. The adrenaline. Yeah. It was so full on. I didn't hear the thud. You go through this whole process of like the, the stalk, the setup, and then you're like, is the camera rolling? Your audio levels. Are you? Can you see him? Can I see him? Can we, can we all see him? All right. Firing, and then you forget. Oh, I need a fire now. <laughs> like I need to like hit it, and I need to like hit it well, and there was a moment where I, I could feel your tension. And I just like, let it out, and I'm like, okay, now we're good. Well done, That mate. was awesome, that was okay. awesome. Let's go grab him, man. That's a shot. These are the moments I live for, the memories I work hard to create. Hard-won victories that yield a bounty of experience, friendship, food, and hopefully, wisdom. You see, life moves on at its own pace, whether you're intentional about creating memories along the way or not. You can live by the status quo, repeating your days like a skipped record, or you can break the cycle and throw yourself into a life of adventure. Unlike many countries, we are fortunate here in Australia to have amazing hunting opportunities. In New South Wales and Victoria alone, there are over 12 million acres of glorious bushland you can explore and hunt tomorrow to make those memories. To fill your freezers, feed your family, push your body and expand your mind. The opportunities are there, ready to be taken. Don't waste your life regretting lost time and adventures. Guillaume Apollinaire, French poet, said the following. Let pass on, pass on, since it all passes on. I will turn back often. Memories are hunting horns whose sounds die out along the wind. I hope the wind calls forth adventures for you. So we're gonna go back cooking this red deer now. And what I wanna do is actually create a venison marinade. So marinating is a great process to undergo for meat because it helps both tenderize it, preserve it, it adds extra flavor. This is a beautiful piece of this red stag right here. The process of marinating meat actually goes back to ancient times where they used to use uh, brine-like liquids like seawater to both preserve and add flavor and break down that meat, make it more tender. That's why the word uh, marinade is taken from the root Latin word marinata, which means out of the sea. We'll go about cutting this up and then we'll go through the process of adding in our marinade, mixing it all together, and then we can cook it on the open fire. So I'm gonna make my incisions about two, three centimeters. You don't want it too thick, but you also don't want it too thin. Getting those medallions, just perfect. So with our steaks cut, we'll now put these aside and work on our marinade. So what we're gonna need for our marinade is one cup of mild olive oil. We're going to then add three quarters of a cup of soya sauce, 100 ml of red wine vinegar, 
some freshly squeezed lemon juice from our lemon tree, quarter of a cup of Worcestershire sauce, two garlic cloves that have been peeled and crushed, also from my garden, two tablespoons of dried mustard powder, one teaspoon of salt, some black pepper, throw it all in a bowl, give it a good mix, and then add in our meat cuts. All right, so that's the marinade done. Now, like I said before, what you want to do is cover this in glad wrap and put it in the fridge for about eight hours. Luckily, I've come prepared, and this is one that I did yesterday. So we're now going to put this on the fire, cook up some lunch. You want to have it on a high heat. You don't want to cook it for very long, one to two minutes, kind of maximum, because it is a very lean meat deer. So we'll use a little bit of the marinade just to put on top and drop our meat on. This is pretty good. <laughs> it's kind of got that Worcestershire sauce. It's kind of a little bit Asian cuisine, but meaty meat flavor. Plus the salt as well. That really cuts through. I really like it. <laughs> and finally, if you haven't done so already, I just want to encourage you to check out the Australian Hunters Club. It's a fantastic community. We'd love to have you a part of it. AustralianHunters.com.au. And if you're still hungry for more content, don't forget there are also a bunch of episodes within season one that I'm sure you'll love. You can check those out as well. Otherwise, till next time, happy hunting. Happy hunting.